Okay, welcome back, everybody. This uh, lesson today is continuing in our study of compound data, which really means structs. And in the next few videos, we're going to look at structs and arrays and how do they interact. So how can we have arrays inside structs and how can we have structs inside arrays? So the first thing we're going to do in this particular video is look at structs in arrays. So that is how we can have an array of structs. And what we'll see is that there's two ways to do it. So if we do it stack based, then we would have something that looks like a struct, or if we use the type def, then we don't have to say struct, we would say like my struct ARR 10, something like that. And the alternative, of course, is heap based arrays, which we know. Um, and where we would say like, to make the same thing, we would say my struct star ARR equals calic. I have to do it on a new line, um, equals calic, and it should be 10, and then size of my struct. So this is not really anything new. It's just applying what we already understood about arrays to structs. And we're going to come back to this uh, example that we've been playing with of room numbers in Hopper Hall. And so the last time we looked at this program, we had three rooms and these different properties of them. And then we were saying, OK, we want to look for, we asked the terminal, uh, the user in the terminal to say enter a room number. And then we try to check if that's equal to any of the given room numbers. And if so, we print out something about it. And this was kind of before we understood about functions and certainly before we understood about arrays. But the problem really lends itself well to using arrays. So let's first try to do this with um, stack base array, which offers some conveniences, but also has limitations like we talked about. So in this case, I would say rooms is a size three because I have uh, three rooms here. And because I'm using stack base arrays, I can use the curly brace syntax to initialize the whole thing right away. And so what I do is I just have uh, each of my individual struct initializations inside this list separated by commas. So this you can't always do this. This only works if uh, we have a fixed size stack based array, like because it's three here. If we didn't know how big this was going to be, um, if we wanted to have this be like end, then that wouldn't really make sense to initialize it like this because you have to fill in this list in the compiler, um, it, like in your program. But if you can do this, that it's nice and makes the program uh, a lot simpler to write. OK, now how can I use this? Well, I could just use it kind of the way that I've been using it here by instead of room one, I would say room index zero. So room index zero, because or I should say RMS, rooms index zero, because RMS is an array of rooms, then each index, so whenever I say like room index zero or room index something else, that gives me a, a struct room. So then I can do with that whatever I would normally do with one of those structs. So this is kind of a basic transformation I could do. And everything is still going to work. So let's check it. So if I type like 433, then I get some information about that room. But of course, we would like to do this in a loop. That's one nice thing about using arrays is we don't have to repeat ourselves so much. And uh, hopefully, if you think about this a little bit, you can think about how you would do this in a loop. We would just say our standard kind of for loop to go through an array, i equals 0, i less than 3. And then if we for each one, we want to see if that's equal to rooms i dot num. So if the thing that we're trying to look up is that one. And then I can say found equals rooms i. And here I can also break early. Now there's a little bit of a problem of when I'm trying to transform this. So that's kind of takes care of these three if else if cases. But now how do I take care of this else condition? Um, so what when do I want to have an error is when I never found the room. But how can I know whether I found it or not? And what I recommend a lot of times for this is just make another bool to keep track of what might have happened. So I'll say like bool got it. And do I want to initialize this to be false or true? Well, I'm going to be able to change it when I do find something. 
So that means that my initial condition should be that I haven't found something. And then in this if statement, I'll say got it equals true. And now this else case can just be if I don't got it. <laughs> um, so if we make it to the end of the loop and got it is still false, then that means that, okay, we never found it and we have an error. Um, so that's just a, a common trick of wanting to uh, use an extra Boolean variable to kind of keep track of more complicated logic like this. So let's check it out, see if it worked. Compiled. And let's try one of the valid rooms. So that seems to work. That's nice. And then let's try an invalid room, like 111. And we get an error and exit one, exactly like we wanted to. So this is making me feel pretty good. I'll test one more. Um, and yeah, OK. So now this is a nice little program that uses a stack-based array of structs. And because we use stack-based array, we don't have to deallocate it or anything. And we just get to run this program how we want. Now, what are the limitations here? Uh, one limitation is it's really all in just how this struct has been initialized. So this really only works if we know exactly how many rooms there are and we're going to hard code it into our program. If I wanted to read in the room information from a file or something like that, then uh, now I have a problem because I would need to know how many rooms there are in advance from the file. And it might be large if it's in a file. You know, files can be very large. Uh, so that might be something to be concerned about. And certainly, I couldn't just initialize it like this. So let's look at heap-based allocation now. And we'll see that it kind of works similarly to how we're used to heap-based allocation with other kinds of arrays. Um, so we would say room star rooms equals calc of 3 in this case, and then size of room. So this will make an array of size three of rooms that's all set to zeros initially, and it's all going to be out on the heap. And then we have to set each one individually. So we would have to say like rooms zero equals, and now we can't do this because remember, we can only do this syntax when we're first initializing it. Um, and so we kind of have to go through each part of it one by one which will be annoying in this case because we know in advance everything about these rooms. So we would have to like room 0.num equals 103. If we actually do know all the information about our structs and our array in advance, this is going to be much more annoying because now I have to repeat this for rooms 1 and rooms 2. But if we are reading it from the reading it from the command line, then this is not only would be so this wouldn't really be any more difficult if we were because we have to read in each one of these pieces separately anyway. In that case, it would make a lot of sense to do it this way as well because, like I said, the potentially the number of rooms could be really large. But if I do all that initialization, it ends up being more verbose. And of course, there's one other thing I also have to remember to do, which is to free this array at the end. So I'll say free rooms at the end. And now I have a perfectly good program that's doing the same thing as before. I have to do a bunch more lines to initialize everything, but um, otherwise the program will run the same as before. 